Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 22 of my live video tour series. It's a nice lovely May day today and I think everyone here is feeling it out near the Canal Saint-Martin. So as the title uh, uh, describes here, um, Canal Saint-Martin today, the 10th arrondissement. Hello Heather Jackson, you're the first one to arrive as a live viewer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Excited for this one, I'm going to show you some of my favorite addresses uh, near the Canal Saint-Martin. And here what we're looking at, we're actually in a small park and there's some sort of arts and performance collective that have installed this temporary structure. If you can see, there's sort of a, a woman figure there and then sort of a pirate ship slash uh, fairground ride that they spin kids around on. And so there's a, very, a great sense of community and just some Saturday relaxation today here. I'm feeling good. I even went uh, socksless today, if you can see that. So it's just that kind of day. And let me give you a pan here near, that's the canal over there and we'll be exploring that in just a moment. Benita Guzzi's in the house. Hello, Heather Liebhart. Tower of Back is here, it's great. And we're already at, a, already at 100 live viewers. That's exciting, hello, Sandy. So, Canal Saint-Martin, this is an area that a lot of folks never get to, so I'm excited to help all of you discover some of this today. Again, for those just joining, we're in a little park along the canal, and this, this structure isn't always here. This is just for this weekend. There's a, an arts and performance collective that uh, invites kids to come and play on that, and they sing, and there's some actors. You can see the kids getting loaded onto it right now. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you're sharing your Saturday with me, or if you're watching this on the replay, re replay later on, I appreciate that as well. Let's get started. We're not quite at the canal yet, but it's very close, let me tell you. Before we leave this park, here's, a, here's something that they do in, in the more local, less touristy parks, is where they, they create these spaces that are very sort of wild, like these wild plant and flower spaces. And you can see that this little uh, hut over there, so to speak, where the headquarters is, where they take care of this. And just let me show you what's going on here. Paris has actually a surprising number of green spaces. Anne Beckinsale from Down Under watching at 1 a.m. in the morning. Thank you so much, Anne. I appreciate that. I love my Aussie fans. We'll catch the name of this park on the way out, by the way, so you can mark it in your notebooks. Isn't this lovely, these little spaces, right? This. Andrea said, I absolutely love this. Fantastic. Let's walk through here. There's a little trellis here. You know, I started this live program, the live video tours, uh, in February. And I always thought to myself, well, Corey, that wasn't a very great time to start this project because there wasn't a lot uh, blooming. But now I'm so glad that it's spring, almost summertime, and I can show you pretty much on every video uh, a lovely green space and some flowers. So this is a real family-style neighborhood, the Canal Saint-Martin. And you know that saying of Parisians really owning their city and really taking advantage of it. That's what's going on here. A lot of Paris meditation to be had here for sure. Let's exit this space through here. And let me show you this view as well. These ladies sitting at the little at the Garden HQ over there. Nice rose bush there, huh? Ah, Joyce says she's watching by the campfire with her family. That is fantastic. I love that so many of you diehard uh, viewers and followers watch it no matter where you are, no matter what you're up to. Ah, now we can see that contraption in action, by the way, as we head out the park. <laughs> They're having a good time today. You almost have a feeling that summer has officially arrived. 
so here we go. And I will snag the name of this park on the way out. I promise you that. And then we'll hit the banks of this canal and see what's going on. Here we are. Now this park, turns out, was created the same year that I was created in 1977. Jardin Villemont. And this is the canal here. So we'll be popping over that in a minute. I'm hoping this is a nice discovery for a lot of you who haven't made it out here, or of course some of you haven't even been to Paris before. But even those who come here several times never quite make it to this area. And it's very local, it's very hip, it's sort of described as up and coming, although it has arrived in a lot of ways. So it's all about ultra local atmosphere. Well, the name of this cafe is L'Atmosphère. So that is apropos that I mentioned that. Florist there. Now you notice it's a little rough around the edges along the canal. Uh, I would describe it as shabby chic. So there's street art. I don't know if you can make up that, that pink head up there. And just a lot of artists expressing themselves, sometimes legally, sometimes not so legally. And this is one of the more vibrant areas of the canal here. This is a, a chain of stores. Well, not a chain, but um, there are a few locations called Antoine and Lily. And if you look at those gorgeous colors there, it's quite charming, isn't it? So what you see there is each, there are three stores of Antoine and Lily and each color represents a different shop. One of them is women's fashion and accessories. Another one is uh, home decoration. And then another one is children's uh, toys. Hi, Cindy White. Hi, Laura West. That beautiful bridge. We're going to cross that lovely bridge over there. So you have these bridges called les passerelles. They're uh, wrought iron bridges that cross over the canal uh, periodically along the way. And they offer for some really nice views. Look at this. And they've got, most of them are equipped with the classic street lamps, if you can see that. So if you get just the right look, yeah, go ahead and send me those hearts and those smileys and the thumbs. Uh, you can kind of catch yourself in some pretty cinematic spots here, really. And it's definitely a version of Paris that a lot of people don't see. That's why I'm excited to show you. Let me just flick you back over to the Antoine and Lily shops. Just a real, real fun spot. Hi, Vicky. Uh, Vicky says she's joining late, wondering where we are. We're at the Canal Saint-Martin, the St. Martin Canal. And we're heading up one of these passerelles, one of these foot bridges. And these are great because this gives you the best vantage point of the water itself. This is the canal. Bonjour, Vivian Barnett. Comment ça va? Je suis content que tu es là, Vivienne, et tout le reste, tout le monde qui vient me joindre sur ce samedi. Un très bel après-midi à Paris. There's the park that we were at. Yeah, Julia, I'm going to cross not one of these bridges, but actually one of the locks. Um, I'll show you some of the locks a little bit later. Actually, you can see them. A little bit in the distance there, see those locks that open up the, the waterways, the different basin, uh, basins of water so the, the boats can actually navigate the incline. There's a steep incline that this canal makes. So she was on one of those, not that one in particular, but definitely one a little bit further south. So we're in Amelie territory for those who are fans of that. And again, I want us to squeeze every ounce of juice out of this location here. So I want to give you some nice compositions. Now, what's the deal with the canal? A little bit of history. You know, I always throw in a bit of history. Uh, this is Napoleon Bonaparte. When he becomes emperor in 1804, soon after he uh, redirects a large source of water called the Canal de Lourc, 60 something miles northeast of Paris and he wants to redirect this canal into the Seine. So it actually flows all the way down 
into the Seine River, running through the center of Paris. And that was to bring in fresh water and also to facilitate uh, imports. Things like wine, things like coal and charcoal and asphalt. Okay, so along the canal, we have some wonderful shops. And this is a great one. I actually asked this designer, this uh, lady, if she wouldn't mind us popping in. So I want you to note the name here. Lulu is actually her name, the name of the owner. Lulu, Lulu les âmes arts. Am is the word for soul, plural word for soul. So right when you see in the window, you can see that some fun stuff is going on here. A little mannequin here doing a bit of advertising for Lulu. Her name is Lulu Weiss, or Lulu Weiss with a W, but here they pronounce it like a V. And here we go. Bonjour. C'est moi. Bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. So look at this. This is great. Now, Lulu is a graphic designer and a photographer. So she displays her photography here. And this is always for sale. And she's a great, great photographer. She also has created these amazing postcards. Take a look at this. If you want a postcard that is very unique and not like any other that you'll find in town, they're actually in these sort of small frames. I can show you this. Look at that, there's something on the back here. Actually signed by the artist, how great is that? It's a little more expensive than an actual postcard, but boy, if you want an actual uh, unique souvenir, these are actually her photographs that are the area of the canal and the neighborhood and the, the character of Paris as she sees it. And she's got these beautiful hats. Look at this, how great is this? Just a real quick look at her shop. Now, for those of you who are Patreon subscribers, you will get a, a PDF map if you subscribe uh, to $10 or more. A PDF map of all of these addresses so you can have a record of exactly where this shop is. Scarves, hats. It's just a, a great uh, example of the eclectic nature of some of the stores here very small. You feel like you stumbled into someone's uh, vintage closet. That's me. Hi. I'm a little sweaty today. It's warm and humid today. I've got a couple of great interior spaces that I want to show you today. Okay, here we go. That's Lulu on the right. She doesn't want to be on camera. That's okay. I will show the dog though. Coucou chien. Ah. <laughs> Ça va aujourd'hui, hein? T'es content d'être là? C'est sympa ici? Il fait un peu plus frais que dehors? Oui, il fait bon. Bon. Je peux le toucher un peu? Ah. Oui, bon chien, bon chien. Comment est-ce? Ah, c'est une fille. Comment elle s'appelle? Jessie. It's a female dog named Jessie. Oui. Oh, tu es gentil. Bon. Merci beaucoup, Lulu. Super. Au revoir. Bonne journée. Bonne journée. Je vais voir. À bientôt. Hein. Oui, à très bientôt. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so let me show you that shop again. Lulu les âmes. Uh, keep, a, keep that in mind next time you come through here. Well, I'm glad for you pet lovers, you dog lovers, that we got to throw that in for you. A little bonus. Unexpected. Little Jesse just chilling out along the canal. Life is good for Jesse. We're going to pop down a street called the Ruby Shop. Now again, uh, there's a lot of art, a lot of street art, some tagging and whatnot. Here we have confiance, which is the French word for confidence. They're certainly, certainly not lacking that in Paris, are they? Also in the category of street art. Look at this, this is quite lovely. If my friend Ann Winfield is watching, she and I actually took a photo against this wall a few days ago. Because if you don't already know, if you're new to this program, uh, I am a full-time tour guide and so I give tours of these areas, this neighborhood and others, all the time. 
So you can contact me. All of that info is in the description of this video. And uh, this whole video will be available for replay on my Facebook page. I want to show you this too. Now, this used to be an industrial waterway under Napoleon. And so you still have spaces like this that quite frankly feel like they were uh, artisan shops, uh, warehouses, studios perhaps, even housing for the industrial workers. So every now and then you can get lost in these little alleyways. At the end there, there is a sort of a temporary sale going on. I tried to get in there earlier and they kicked me out because I didn't have an invitation, but that's what's going on at the end there. You can see those people. So again, along the Canal Saint-Martin, it's not necessarily... Bonjour, Di. Nice to see you there. Hello, Mimi. Glad you're here. Um, not necessarily the kind of Paris that you see downtown. It's not necessarily the Disney-fied Paris. Don't get me wrong. I love myself some good Disney-fied Paris, but uh, this offers something a little more authentic as far as the actual everyday life of the average Parisian. You have a lot of families here. It's definitely a, a hip area. So you have young hipster families uh, raising their kids and riding their bicycles around and stuff. So there's a great atmosphere. Uh, there's also some great food. I'll show you some locations that you definitely want to remember for coffee and wine and cheese and all that kind of stuff. By the way, do you see at the end of the street, ah, oh, there's a stunning example of Henri IV and his architecture from the 17th century. I know a lot of you know the uh, square Place des Vosges. It's one of my favorites. I've included it once or twice in this, in this video tour series. And you can see evidence of, uh, this is not Place des Vosges, but it's a hospital built by the same king, Henri IV, at the same time as Place des Vosges in the early 1600s. And that is a beauty. It's still a functioning hospital, in fact. That gorgeous brick and uh, white limestone and those blue slate roofs, those very steep French rooftops. Here's another real hip spot. It's called La Chambre aux Oiseaux, the bird's room, or the bird's bedroom, maybe more specifically. By the way, here is, who knows if these people want me filming them, but how great is that for a Parisian postcard minus the big trash can? <laughs> That's live video for you. If this wasn't live, I would have gone and reshot that. But anyway, look at that. It's great with the scooters. Jennifer Moore says she's watching with her kids right now. Hello, kids. Thanks, kids, for watching. Let me show you how this looks inside real quick. I actually, this is a tea room and a cafe. And I've always, bonjour. And I've always really loved the the simple yet vintage atmosphere here, right? Look at that wallpaper. Oh, it's gorgeous. Finis juste une seconde, ça va? Bonjour, bonjour. Look at this. So this is a great place to come and work. They also have a really lovely drink that is sort of a, a detox or a cold and flu drink, which is um, hot lemon and ginger uh, and honey. And it's perfect for when you're, for when you're sick, for sure. Just a real comfortable setting here. It's called La Chambre aux Oiseaux. Merci, monsieur. Au revoir. Bonne journée. Yeah, Vivian, that wallpaper is stunning, isn't it? Woo! If only my wife Charlotte would allow me to use that kind of wallpaper. I'm so traditional, but she is more sort of modern and sort of designer oriented with her with her fashions which is great she's very good at it but she definitely prefers more modern designs than the old stuff but i'm just so sentimental at heart there's another street that is has a lovely florist here let me see if i can find a good composition something like that and when they open uh, when they open up uh, they put all their potted plants out here isn't that nice And then right next door, there is a, an épicerie, which is basically a, a fine gourmet food s uh, store. Breakfast, lunch, snacks. Let me see if I can crack open the door and just give you a quick little view. Bonjour. En fait, je filme juste quelques secondes. Ça va? Juste pour montrer. Merci beaucoup. C'est gentil. 
So they've got a little um, terrace up here where you can eat. See that? Boop. So they make sandwiches and salads and things. And then they've got a, a nicely cur curated selection of wine and pâtés and olive oils. Here's a big old hunk of chocolate that I'd love to dig into one day. Selling coffee here. Here it looks like we've got uh, more chocolate and chocolate spreads and caramel spreads and jams. Right up there. So that's what the canal is about also. It's about a lot of, let me close the door so it's not so noisy here. This right here, by the way, oh boy. If you want to really indulge, I know a lot of you love French butter, but even great French butter, butter is not created equal. This right here is called Baldier. And if you can get a hold of Baldier, you can get it unsalted, half salted, heavily salted, flavored with different things. Seek that out, Baldier butter. I can tell you, you just, you'll never look back once you try that. Even the French agree that Baldier is the best. Okay. Je vous remercie, bonne journée, au revoir. So again, that is called Mirt. I guess is how you pronounce that. Also here, let me show you this place called Ten Bells. This is considered by some to be the best coffee in Paris. Again, some of these places are so easy to walk right past, right? But that's almost a sign of how good they are. The easier they are to overlook, the better they are. So again, there's just a lot of greenery happening here. And that's 10 Bells Coffee. Onward. Here's another cute spot that's actually a Portuguese bakery called Don Antonia. Let me show you the treats that are, ooh, it's busy here. I'm trying to navigate the sidewalks as best I can. You can make that out. Ooh, that's a nice uh, screen capture for Peggy Michik. So again, this is all Portuguese. A lot of these, I don't even know what they are, or what they taste like. Let me show you the interior. Bonjour. Bonjour. Just a quick look there. Okay. So much good stuff here. Let me say hello to you all. Actually, let's check on the time. How are we doing time-wise? Okay, great. Hi, everybody. This is what I look like if you didn't know already. Uh, again, my name's Corey Fry. I call myself a French fry in Paris. I'm a full-time tour guide as an American living here for the last eight years. I'm a photographer. I'm a live streamer. What else do I do? Blogger, if I mention that. So if you want to take a tour with me and see some of this stuff, this is just giving you a taste of my tour, of my walk of the Canal Saint-Martin and the 10th arrondissement. So if you want to go more in depth, uh, go ahead and look in the description of this video on my Facebook page and you can get all the info. I'm actually got something else to show you here. This is a, an iconic address for uh, film buffs. Uh, especially French film bus, buffs because in 1938 there was a black and white French film called Hotel du Nord which means the Hotel of the North and it was actually uh, the movie was modeled after a very popular book that had been written by the same name and basically the movie goes into uh, the story of a couple that's staying in this hotel and it goes through the sort of involves the characters the rather eccentric characters who are staying here uh, so I don't know how many of you have heard of the movie Hotel du Nord but it's a classic classic French flick now what's interesting here, you can see there's a nice restaurant at the bottom. Very hip. Really, this is the hippest of the hip along the canal, I gotta tell you. This is just the place to be. Forget about the Champs-Élysées, forget about Boulevard Saint-Germain, uh, definitely forget about being next to Notre Dame. This is where you wanna be. So anyway, the story, that, the quick anecdote here is, in the 1980s, uh, an apartment uh, developer, apartment building developer, wanted to tear this down, okay? The Hotel du Nord. And people said, oh my God, you can't do that, you can't do that. And so they were protesting and petitioning. And in fact, the one who led the charge to protect this was the actress, the main actress called Ar Arletti. 
And Arletti, who was in the film as the main character, decided in the 1980s as an older lady, I'm going to try to save this iconic building. Now, they actually in the end couldn't save the building. If you see, the apartment developer won in the end and developed all of this. But the people behind the, the protests were able to save the facade. So there's nothing behind this. There's no actual hotel anymore. But thank goodness they were able to protect the facade. And so, especially for lovers of film. And jump up. Mud puddle there? Okay. Here's a newcomer as far as hotels called Le Citizen. Or Citizen, I guess. It's not even a French word. I guess you'd pronounce it the, the English way. That's pretty cool. Is that Snoopy? Nice. Okay, back to the canal, right there. Let me cross here. So the, the canal is, it used to be an industrial waterway and it's been rehabilitated. The architecture is a little bit of a hodgepodge. I don't know if you've noticed that yet. So you don't have a lot of the classic Parisian architecture, but uh, it's just because there wasn't a lot of sort of zoning regulations, and so they just built all kinds of different styles here. And people all along, you know, to grab a, a bottle of wine with your friends. This place right here is called Marcel. And this is, they do two things really well at Marcel. Indian food, first of all, if you want to grab some great Indian, and also uh, cocktails. And I just really like the vibe here, like these beautiful, um, see those beautiful leather chairs, good stuff. That's Marcel. If you want to grab a drink at night along the canal, that's a good place to do it. Andrew is asking, can you just sit and drink wine on a bench? 100% yes, you can. As long as you are not being rowdy and you're being respectful and not bothering anybody and not sitting on top of someone's car, you can absolutely crack open a bottle of wine and just go to town, anywhere in the city. Just give you the kind of cinematic style pan there as we go along. Put the stabilizer to good use. Okay, you can see another passerelle. And again, you know the graffiti, the tagging, gives it that feeling of, again, not Disney-fied Paris. This isn't the touristy Paris. We're far off the tourist beaten track, so to speak. But that's what makes the 10th arrondissement so good. Maybe in five years, 10 years, this area will be in all the guidebooks around the world and tourists will flock here and it'll probably change character a little bit. But for now, it's, um, you kind of got to be in the know. And speaking of being in the know, I want you to, to check this out. I want you to notice something here. Rather nondescript wall, no major sign. And another nondescript wall with no major signage. But there's a corridor here and if you walk through here, you will be generously rewarded. Again, some of the best places are the places that you can't find, right? Almost like, uh, like a speakeasy, and you've got to be in the know. This is certainly one of those spots. By the way, before we even get there, let me show you this. That's kind of fun, isn't it? So we have sort of a Tudor-style building with the beams there, right? Legit. And then here they decided, hey, let's just paint one on. So still, you get here, still no sign, right? You still have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Just an arrow saying, okay, well, I guess I'll check it out. And then when you go inside.
Okay, so I don't have enough signal in there. What I'm going to try to do is walk really fast and get us inside before I lose connection. So you ready? We're going to do this. So I'm not going to talk until I can get into the garden and back outside. Hopefully, the signal won't cut out on me. Here we go. Okay, we're back outside. Hopefully I'll have enough signal here. So hopefully you caught a quick glimpse as I ran through there. This is called Le Comptoir Général, and this is their garden. And Le Comptoir Général is a um, sort of a grassroots project where they try to create a space that was part cafe, part bar, part performance space. Look at this. I mean, you wouldn't know that this was hiding just steps off of the canal. A couple of good looking dudes there for any ladies who are looking for somebody. Maybe I'll grab their phone numbers on the way out. And let's see, hopefully I'll have a little bit of signal in here. There's a big pirate ship that they built. Do you see that? And so it's basically a space to grab a cocktail and a drink and hang out with your friends, have a nice apéro. Look at that, it's really exciting, huh? Very, very unexpected. A bit of an African feel, a bit of a tropical feel. That's a bar, by the way. And that's a mermaid, by the way. Called Le Comptoir Général. And I gotta tell you, if you definitely want to go off the beaten track and you wanna get to the soul of Paris, the heart of Paris, where the locals are really doing their thing and nobody else knows where you are, it's here. The hippest of the hip, as I said earlier. Let me show you this little section here. This is a tiny little section that's d dedicated to explorers and Indiana Jones types with some great paraphernalia there. the garden again. So definitely lock this one away in the memory banks, pop it into your Paris notebooks. Okay, great. I didn't lose you guys in there. I'm happy. Back through the corridor. Pretty eclectic place, huh? <laughs> what an absolute gem this is. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. For me, that place is really a highlight of the canal. Again, as a reminder, absolutely no marking as to what's going on in there. You don't even know the first time you arrive if you have the right to pop in, but definitely do so. Just be aware that they open late in the day on the weekdays. 
So don't show up around lunchtime or in the early afternoon and expect to, uh, to get in. You've got to come a little bit later. But they do open until, uh, they're open until 2 a.m. every night. So it's definitely a great uh, night spot. Back down the corridor. Pretty great view there, isn't it? Let's get the lamp post all the way in there. There we go. Hi, Ann Winfield. You're asking if that's open every day. I believe it is. Uh, you can very easily check on Google the exact hours. It's all there, the schedule on Google Maps. And before we leave, let me show you this too that we missed on the way in. Another painted wall. Big, beautiful tree there. They're like, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a tree here? Let's just paint one. Thanks for sending the hearts, guys. When you send those hearts, by the way, it tells Facebook that this video is doing well and people like it. And then the algorithm will help share it with other people. So if you want to help me spread the word, uh, definitely send me some hearts and some thumbs up and things of that nature. Look at that boy on a sunny, Summary day, my goodness. Great, so great. If you look down the end of this street on the Rue Richeron, can you make out that, that same hospital? A different section of the 17th century hospital, if you can see that. Let's put you right along the water. In fact, let's do as the Romans do, right? Let's actually have a seat right here. I'm gonna dangle my feet off the edge, although if I dangle them too much, they're going right in the water. It doesn't really get more Parisian than this right here, hanging out on the canal. As we have this moment, let me do my quick pl a Patreon plug, by the way. For those of you who aren't already subscribers on my Patreon website, you can find a link in the description of this video. And uh, what you can do is become a member and get a lot, uh, you can support this project and allow me to continue it and evolve it, but also you can get a lot of great rewards along the way. Things like access to a couple of private Facebook groups and a wonderful community of people who call themselves the Freets. You get it? French fry, frites. And they are just really, really lovely to each other. They answer each other's questions and give each other tips. You'll also have access as a Patreon member to private cafe chats. And today, my subscribers are going to enjoy a live cafe chat with one of our own, Barbara Harper. And we're going to talk about uh, bringing kids to Paris and enjoying Paris with kids, what kind of activities you can do with them. And we're also going to talk about her experiences practicing French. I know a lot of you are studying French. And every week after every video, even though these videos are free, you can get private access via your Patreon membership to a guest who chats with me at a cafe. And we usually talk about all sorts of things, about art in Paris and food in Paris. Ah. Okay, time to go. I've done my plug. And I've got another great shop to show you. What else do you get as a Patreon member, by the way? You get discounts on your actual physical tours. If you ever come to Paris and you want to tour with me, you'll get a discount on that. You'll also get advance notice of where each of these videos is going to take place each week. You'll also get a PDF map of every single video that I record here. Uh, and so you'll know exactly on the map which part of Paris these addresses are and all the notes that I mention on the video. So you don't have to remember any of this. If you become a Patreon member, uh, it's all going to be there for you and you can essentially create your own Paris notebook, your own Paris guidebook. French fry style. Oh, and another thing, I know I'm going on and on about Patreon, but another great thing is those same frites, my members, every single week, every Wednesday, here in Paris, if you're around, we have a meetup in a cafe. 
and you can meet other subscribers of mine, which means other Paris lovers. And you can socialize, maybe make a friend or two, hang out and have a cafe with other Paris fanatics like yourself. What I want to do actually, I'm going to pop up on this bridge. I want to show you one last shop and that's where we're going to do the cafe chat with Barbara Harper. But uh, why not get another perspective from the top here. Thanks everybody who's saying that Patreon is worth it. I appreciate that. And again, if you want to get in more in depth with the canal, I do a two hour walking tour of this area where we really break it down and we hit all the side streets and I show you all that's going on. So you can contact me on my blog, A French Fry in Paris, via the links in the description. And we can talk about a possible tour of this area or several others. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the walk, but I want to give a shout out. I actually want to surprise somebody with a shout out, someone who doesn't expect it. Let me here for a second. I'm a bit sweaty today, sorry. It's a hot one, a humid one. But I want to give a shout out, and I know this girl, this lady's watching on the replay. Um, Wendy McMurtry, how are you? I understand, Wendy, I hear from your friends who I toured with today that you, you call yourself a super fan of mine. And so I really want to thank you for the support and for the love and spreading the word and sending people my way and just saying a lot of good things about this project. So thank you, Wendy, Wendy McMurtry. I understand you used to live in Paris, but I hope you come back one day and that we can walk around together. And maybe you can, uh, I can invite you on one of these videos if you wanna say hello to the community. So thanks a lot, Wendy. Um, love to have the super fans out there. I really appreciate the support. And that goes for all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. It has just been absolutely wonderful. And believe me, I got plenty of ideas to evolve this project once our baby is born and the dust settles a little bit. So let me show you this last location that we're going to enjoy. Yeah, everybody in the comments, give Wendy some love. We like to treat each other well here. Look at that view. And I'm sure you notice all the locals here along the border. Huh? So there's a great verb, by the way, in the French language. And the verb is les ardes. And les day literally means to do the lizard, as in lying, just sort of stretching out in the sun, like a lizard would do. So that's what happens here. People just kind of do the lizard and they just soak up some rays. So you could ask someone, you know, what are you doing on the canal? Qu'est-ce que tu fais uh, sur le canal? Bah, je les arbres. I'm lizarding. Je les arbres. Okay, how are we doing on time here? Oh man, the timing, I nailed the timing. Boy, I'm good sometimes. This place is called La Passerelle. It's a concept store, and then it says Art Cafe, and I'll show you what that means inside. La Passerelle, by the way, what does this name mean? Well, these little foot bridges, like this one here, it's called the Passerelle, wrought iron, built in the late 1800s because a guy named Gustav Eiffel. Oh, there's Barbara, Barb. Hello, Barbara. Okay, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk with you in just one moment. Inside there, actually, in the back, there's a cafe. That's one of the frites, and we're gonna have a chat. Boy, she showed up right on time. Well done, Barb. So anyway, in the 1800s, Gustav Eiffel built the Eiffel Tower. I don't know if you've heard of it, but yeah, he built a tower, and he showed everybody how great uh, iron was, cast iron. And, um, it just really uh, was very uh, uh, effective, it was very efficient, it was very affordable, very manageable, and so that's what these are made out of. Look at the light there, my goodness. If we could just get rid of this traffic, right? Silly traffic. Look at that, with a bicycle. Wow, okay, to La Passerelle. Here we go. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. So this is a concept store. Uh, 
This is Cecile and her husband Sven. And they, for about four years, have owned this store here along the canal. And it, it's a concept store in the sense that they uh, very carefully curate everything here. So you really get a sense that it's, it's their personal expression. And there's always some real great stuff here. And you know, this happens a lot along the canal where if you want a unique souvenir or an item for your home, this is a place that I'll, I'll take you into if you join my, uh, my canal tour. And the two of them are just really lovely. Always nice to me and the clients that I bring in here. Now, some, if people want a, a sort of a unique alternative shopping experience, I always send them to the, to the canal because there are a series of shops like this. However, another thing they like to do in the canal... Ah, there's Sven. Bonjour, Sven. Oh, hi, Florian. Oh. How are you? Ça va? I'm very good. I'm very good. Thank you. They, they like the shop. They're a fan of the shop. I can ah, see in the comments. Okay. They're saying, ah, beautiful, yeah, wonderful. Really? So, yeah. Ah, I'm excellent. telling them to come next time they visit yes, the canal. Yes, please do. Let's to say hello. Continue. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay, well, thank you, Sven. Yeah, thank We're going to have a, a coffee, actually, in the cafe. Yes, yeah. with my friend. Okay, in, in one pleasure. minute. Have a seat. Okay, thank you. We'll be joining you. Look at these scarves. Ooh. Definitely want to come here for a scarf, particularly if you're a lady. Now, what's unique about some of the shops along the canal is that they have combinations of things. So there's a cafe back here, what they call an art cafe. See this, just tucked away in the back of this concept store. And they have local artists with their work on display. So they're supporting that. And if the artists sell very well here, uh, what they'll do is the Sven and, and his wife will actually allow the artists to have a permanent set of objects on sale to become part of the inventory, so to speak, of the shop. So that's what you get, combinations of things, right? So a concept store and a cafe, might be a, a fashion boutique and a vegan restaurant. And I'll just give you a quick, quick look at some of the fun stuff here. And this cafe is where we're going to do the private live cafe chat with Barbara, talking specifically about what to do with children in Paris. So for my subscribers, uh, you'll want to be taking some notes on that if you ever bring kids or grandkids through here. These are great, right? Look at this. <laughs> These handlebar concoctions. All right. So, everybody, I want to thank you. I'm going to wrap it up. Boy, I'm sweating. Whew, sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. You can watch the replay on my Facebook page. It'll be there forever and ever. Uh, also on my YouTube channel, A French Fry in Paris. You can follow me there. You can follow me on Instagram. And I think that's about all I want to say. Have a lovely day today. Check out uh, next week. Um, well, I can't promise that because my wife is nine months pregnant. Normally, I would say join me next week, but eh, there's just some chance of that. But in a couple weeks' time, I'll definitely come in back uh, at you with a weekly free walk through Paris, another neighborhood, and other facts and other shops and other food and stuff like that. So listen, the idea is if you can't come to Paris, I'm going to bring Paris to you. Thank you so much. For my Patreon subscribers, head over to our private Facebook group, and we're going to have a chat with Barbara Harper, who's right in front of me here in the flesh. So thanks. Have a lovely weekend, and I really appreciate your support. I hope to see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.